Welcome, one and all. I'm joined here by Betwixt, and we are going to do another movie review. This movie is Rocky Tree, which was released in 1982. It was written, directed, and starred by Sylvester Stallone. It also starred Talia Shaw as his wife, Adrian. We see the return of Apollo Creed, Carl Weathers. Also, we Borges Meredith as uh, Rocky's manager, Mickey. And Bort Young as the ever lovable Polly. <laughs> Polly's a great character, isn't he? And uh, Tony Burton as Duke. And we see now Mr. T enters the phrase. And for some reason, we uh, we see Hulk Hogan here as Thunderlips, the ultimate male. So um, this is where we're kind of staying with the tribute to Carl Weathers because he um, passed away last month. So, And I don't think that he... Um, reached the height of fame that he should have reached. Maybe that's because he didn't go to a certain island, maybe. I don't know. Um, you you can debate that. <laughs> but I'm uh, joined by my uh, good friend Betwixt, as always. How are you keeping Betwixt? Thanks for inviting me on. I'm looking forward to going through this this film. Okay, so where where will we begin? Well, I suppose we will begin by the, at the start. Um, as as he always does, uh, Sylvester Stallone, he always starts with the previous one. So we're from Rocky Two. This is where he wins the belt, and he he wins it by one second. He he was a jammy bastard, wasn't he? he really was. <laughs> you know, Creed had him with one on points, but anyway, he um, knocks Creed out, and Creed can't get back up, and that's the start of it. And then he has a few fights, a few title offenses he has. But he, um, and we see Club Lang moving up then in the in the ranks. He's like ranked number six, then he's five, four, and he's ranked number one, then he is. And um, then, yeah, we'll be, uh, move on to um, Hulk Hogan, will we? This is where he uh, has a fight with uh, uh, Hulk Hogan, uh, Thunder Lips. And it's a boxer versus a wrestler. And I suppose this is uh, the first kind of UFC, you know, kind of match that, that, that we were doing back then. And um, I, I have to laugh at uh, when Pauly says, uh, why are they carrying him? <laughs> and Mickey says, he's not, he's walking. <laughs> but uh, yeah, com- comes into the ring. And he's like I I think um what do, what do I do was do I do I try to keep the whole wrestling thing as if it was real because he he comes in real serious he comes in like as if he's going to kill him like you know you know you you think it's all fake and all he's going you know but you know he at the end of having a a bit of a rumble you do and um, Rocky thinks well it's it's for charity it is you know but um. Rocky then suddenly realizes that this chap means business, you know, um, and he he uh, the uh, start going at it, and you know, Rocky ends up, you know, well, Thunder Lips uh, beats the crap out of him, and then Rocky then gets the upper hand when he gets his gloves cut off, and he uh, throws Thunder Lips out, out of the ring. Now, from what I I heard is that um, Rocky couldn't lift, actually lift Hulk Hogan, so Hulk Hogan kind of jumped into his arms and he um, threw him out, threw him out of the ring. And I believe that uh, a couple of people got hurt because of the weight of Hulk Hogan when he when he threw him out. But um, that was uh, that 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 was it was it was a bit of a a weird kind of a crossover from the boxer to the wrestler. What did you think about that um, betwixt? Yeah, it was very strange, and you know, Rocky and Mick, the manager, they thought it was just going to be a bit of fun. You know, it was for the cameras, and it turned into a very physical contest. But if I could just go back, Irish Fenian, because at the very start, you, you mentioned, you know, you have the flashbacks to the previous uh, films, but then after that, you have a montage, and it shows you the up and coming Clubber Lang and it shows you what Rocky's up to. And you can see Clubber Lang is, is hungry for success. He's a fanatic and he wants to be the champion. 
And all this time, every time you see Clubber Lang, you know, beating someone up in the ring, and he's he's very uh, he's a very dirty fighter as well because even if uh, his opponent is on the canvas, he'll still try and lean down and punch him in the head. You know, he just doesn't care about the rules. And when the referees try to you know get in his way, he'll push the referee to the side. So you'd wonder how this guy hasn't been barred from the competitions, you know. But all this time, Rocky's just. It looks like he's sparring, really. You know, they're supposed to be real matches, but they look more like sparring contests. And you see him in photo shoots. You see him wearing nice clothes. You see his family. You know, he's living. He's living at large. He's, you know, he's on top in every way, except physically. He's not really on top. He thinks he is, but he's not. He's not really being pushed, and that's because his manager Mick wants to retire and he presumes Rocky's going to retire now as well. He's, you know, he's, he's won his, his big belt. But this, uh, this Clubber Lang is getting pissed off because he's not getting the attention he believes he merits. And after, you know, after some of his matches, he starts shouting from the ring, I want Balboa, I want Balboa. And Rocky hasn't heard of this guy at all. And I think that's because Mick has tried to keep, keep it quiet not let Rocky know that there's this there's this young punk out there who who wants to take him on and who could possibly take the belt off him. And it's when uh, Rocky goes he goes with his wife to you know the it's a presentation they're they're unveiling a statue of Rocky. Uh, it's the city of Philadelphia. They want to show how grateful they are to Rocky Balboa for everything he's done for the city of Philadelphia. And it's at the unveiling that Clubber Lang, and Clubber Lang was at that uh, wrestling boxing crossover as well. You could see he was there. He'd come from Chicago and he's he's really checking out what Rocky's up to. And obviously he would have heard about this unveiling. So he comes to the unveiling. And as soon as he hears Rocky Balboa give his speech and say that he believes it's now time he retires, he goes absolutely apeshit and he... Um, pushes to the front of the, the crowd and he says to Rocky, yeah, you know, you're not going to retire. Uh, you've got to fight me first. You've been keeping me down. And Mick tries to intervene and say, listen, listen, young punk, uh, you know, you're not welcome here. You know, get out. You're, you're not welcome. And, and Clubber Lang says, this is not, this what was it. This has nothing to do with you, old man. Uh, I want, I want Balboa. And Rocky's, Mick, Mick saying to Rocky, ignore him, he's he's mad, he's just a crazy guy. And then Clubber Lang says to you can actually see in this in this scene that there is a problem. Mick is having a problem with his heart. Because he looks really uncomfortable. He's kind of clasping his hand to his chest. So you know that Mick really wants to get out of this, get out of coaching, get away from the stress. All going well, he'll probably have a year of life left. But uh, it's when Mick tries to intervene and he, he then tells Rocky, you know, just ignore this guy. That's when Clubber Lang shouts up to Rocky's wife. <laughs> and he says, um, he says, uh, your, your, your husband's a coward. Um, I bet at night you, you dream about a real man. Why don't you come around to my apartment and I'll show you a real man. And when he says that in front of everyone, Rocky goes absolutely mental and says, I'll, I'll fight you. I'll fight you. And Mick then turns to Rocky and says, well, you'll be doing it without me. And Rocky goes, what do you mean? And, he's, and Mick says, I'm done. I'm out. I don't want any more of it. And we find out later that Mick has been supplying uh, competitors uh, for Rocky, but they're not real champion material. They're just kind of second-rate fighters. So Rocky... All this time, has has thought he was on top of his game. He was beating all these these guys, but these guys were were rubbish fighters. And Mick tries to tell Rocky. He says, "You know, you can't beat this guy, Clubber Lang. You just can't beat him. I've seen him. He'll kill you to death in three rounds. <laughs> He'll kill you to death in three rounds." And uh, Rocky's absolutely yeah. You know, he's he's not the brightest spark, Rocky. He, he's he's shocked. He he's never never known about this. And he, he gets into his head, no, no, he's going to fight him, he's going to fight him. And he eventually convinces Mick 
come on, Mick, just one more fight, and then we'll we'll join the circus or something. And eventually Mick says, okay, the last fight. And yeah, so I don't know where you want to go from here. Yeah, you were saying about um, Mickey was uh, protecting him, and he was like, if you, if you see the headlines, like it was um, like um, American champ KOs German champ and all this. So he like R- Rocky, as you said, yeah, didn't know that he was fighting all this because and when th- these are like setups, as like you know, uh, Club Alang was saying to him at that um, the un- unveiling the, uh, the statue, which it didn't even look like him to be honest with you. <laughs> but um, yeah, he uh, says that well. Um, he goes, oh, what, what's wrong, Rocky? I, I, I want to fight this guy and all. And he goes, well, then you, Mickey goes, well, then you got him. But you got him without me. And he's like, what do you mean? And all that. And then it wasn't until they get after then he, he insults Rocky's wife and that. But when they, when they get back to Rocky's home, you see Mickey and he's um, packing his bags. He is. And he's... Uh, <clears throat> What's he? What's he say? He's uh, like Rocky. He hasn't got a clear. Like he's like you know what? What's all, all this like? And like Mickey, like you know, says like um, like that that uh, beating that you took from Apollo Creed should have killed you. He said, and I was just protecting you and that. And he goes so. He, Rocky was like, so what? Do our setups? And he, he goes, and Mickey goes, no, they weren't setups. They were good fighters, but they weren't killers like this. He'll knock it in the marrow rack. <laughs> you know? This this kind of uh, stuff. But um, <laughs> I had to laugh at uh, one part because they, they were sitting down, they were, and Rocky was saying, look, w- one more fight, and then Rocky goes to Mickey, he says, if, if you don't do this, well, I uh, tell everyone that you haven't changed your underwear in 10 years. <laughs> and then Mickey goes, you wouldn't all, wouldn't you? <laughs> but uh, he agrees to um, uh, train for for the last time. But the training is like nothing like the first or the second one. He, he rents out this hall and it's all about, you know, he's playing music and he, people are taking uh, p- uh, pictures. There's actually there's a girl and um, if anyone know well not <clears throat> excuse me this is when he was still married to Sasha Stallone the girl that that comes up to him when he's on the bike uh, that's that was his actual wife that gives him a kiss and Mickey's like girl here you know but um it's all just for, like they, they weren't trying properly it was just like he, he was taking it for like a show you know but club Alang meant business like you know as as mickey even says hell you ain't be hung you, you haven't been hungry since you won that belt rock you know which he you know hasn't really been you know but um the uh club Alang is is doing the stuff in, in his you know basement and then um we uh come to the uh i, I suppose the the first three and um Club Alang and do you know what they, they really made like uh, Club Alang the most kind of dislikable person in it like there was no redeeming features about him like you, you could say about Creed right he was you know in the in the second one he, he was more vicious but he was still funny you know he, he still had that Muhammad Ali kind of you know jive about him but Club Alang just you know he no, not at all. Because if if you can re- remember that they, they were filming down when he was in the lockers, and he goes, "Y'all better get out of here. You know, I'm, I'm going to hit you. you know, I'm going to kill you. You know, all this kind of way." And he ends up smashing two cameras. He does. So like, um, we we can see that. Yeah, he's not a <clears throat> not a not a very nice person. <laughs> but he, see, um, he seems to have anger issues. Irish feeling seems to have anger issues. Yeah, 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 Ang- anger issues. I'd, I'd say, yeah, something. Well, a psychologist would probably say, yeah, uh, childhood issues. I don't know, maybe. But um, he, uh, you, you can, you can see then, um, as he come out of the dressing room, you can see that Rocky's walk. He, he's down from the stairs, and Club Alain comes down, and as you mentioned about Mickey's heart, Mickey gets kind of thrown into the fray. And he's 
club along. Uh, he throws him to the side, and then Rocky notices it, and Mick's holding his heart. He is, and he um, go, goes over, and he's like, you know, get Rocky's get get a doctor, and uh, and then they they went to the one of the rooms, and um, Rocky wants to call it off. And Mick just grabs him and he says, what do you mean, Colin? You know, he says, go out there and, you know, go out there and fight this man, you know. And uh, Rocky, like, it it broke his confidence, but I think that he um, would have lost in any way if, like, that, that hadn't happened to Mick. But he uh, goes ill and we then um, see... <clears throat> Apollo Creed then makes his uh makes a he's up with the um commentators and he's uh he says um because they're asking him what way um will the fight go and he says well strength goes to the challenger you'd say but he says the the hardest hidden head and you know I know a lot about that he says will uh, go to the champ so I think the champ's gonna take this and. I'm not sure what, I, I can't remember offhand now, but one of the commentators says something to him, and Craig just turns around and he says, well, why do you think I'm sitting up here with you? <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> should, should say Irish feeling as well, at the very start, uh, or close enough to the start, you can see that Polly, the, the uh, brother-in-law, he's starting to hate Rocky. And he's in a pub. <laughs> he's having a he's having a few drinks, or whatever. And as he's walking out, everyone says to him, "Say hello to Rocky, will you?" And then someone else will go, "Yeah, say hello to Rocky for me." And he he's kind of he realizes that his whole life revolves around Rocky. The people in the bar don't know who he is, but they all know that he knows Rocky. And he ends up in a, in an arcade. And just looking at the arcade, like you don't well, they're still around, obviously, but. Uh, it definitely feels real 1980s when you see these arcades and all the kids and teenagers, you know, putting in their coins. But there's like, a, uh, I don't know, is it a pinball machine or something at the very end of the arcade? And nobody's playing it, but it's like Rocky, uh, Rocky in the ring. And when he sees it, I think he, he does he throw something at the at the at the pinball machine? Uh, yeah, he he's, he's um he's a uh, dr- drink. Yeah, co- comes out out of the pub, and he says like, "Why don't you ever give give me your your, your best?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> instead of giving give Rocky your your best. But he uh, walks in and he's laughing at all. I don't know. He's he's out of head, gargled, drunk, and he's laughing at the kids playing the arcade. But he uh, come, I think it was a pinball machine, and he looks at it, and he's. I, I think he has a half bottle of whiskey or something, and he just like takes a sup over, and he looks at it, and whack, he just smashes it, and then he ends up in the drum tank for the night, and then Rocky then shows up then to pick him up, and Polly feels really you know out, outdone because he's like you know. Oh yeah, you you have a lovely car, you know. Did, did you get one for me? <laughs> he goes, um, you have lo- lovely clothes, you know. You've um, he says, uh, what what about your house? You you move Mick in. What about me? <laughs> so he's he's what wants everything, you know. Like he's one of these that wants everything for nothing, you know. <laughs> and there's a lot of people around these days that that want that, you know. But uh, we, we won't get into the whole communism bollocks. But anyway, um, he uh, then, like, you know, um, starts fighting Rocky, he does. Because R- Rocky actually looks like he, he's, um, he's, he looks like, you know, the, the, the hair is real grand. You know, he's wearing, I think he's wearing a camel, is it a camel coat or something like that, camel hair. And he's, um, you know, and he, and he starts fighting with Rocky and, like, you know, because he says, all, all he gave me was this stinking watch, he says, and he throws it on the ground. And then he starts, um, he starts throwing a few digs at Rock. And he goes, he just says, can I have a job? <laughs> and Rocky goes, all you have to do is ask. But um, go, go, actually, sorry, uh, go, going back to the start, I, I forgot to, we uh, forgot to mention I, I always found it mad the way in Rocky Two, after the force uh, or after the fight with Creed and and he had a few quid, he had ads to do, but he couldn't read the cue cards. 
But now in Rocky Three at the start, while the music's playing, he's like doing ads for the American Express, and he's, you know, he, he's fluently doing things, and you know, I I don't know, did he get some training probably for that or something? But um, yeah, he's all souped up and you know ready to go and that. But um, yeah. So what what what's um where, where we go next? I have I have a few quotes here from where Paulie has the altercation with Rocky in the car park. And he says to Rocky, what do you know? I give you my sister and what do you give me? For three years, you, you throw a few free tickets my way. You and the sister could go to hell. And Rocky says, watch your mouth, Paulie. <laughs> then he says, what you going to do? Whack me? Come on, I don't sweat you. And then Rocky says, why don't you screw your head on right? But there, there's a part, I'm trying to look for it here. Um, I thought it was very funny. Uh, Rocky starts telling him, you know, you're, you're like a brother to me, Paulie. He says, he's, he's like giving him a compliment, then he, then he insults him. Um, where, is it, where is it? And then Paulie, he mentions a watch or something, and Paulie uh, takes off the watch and throws it on the ground, and he's like, I don't want it, the damn thing doesn't work anyway. And when Rocky tries to pick it up, he kicks it, he kicks it away. Um, so I'm trying to see where it is. If I can oh, yeah. find this. He, he I calls think, him a yeah. loser anyway. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I uh, think, oh, yeah, now what, what you're on, he um, says, you know, this is coming straight from the heart, Paulie. I think he says, um, you're, you're nothing but a jealous, lazy bum. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's, 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 that's where Paulie, Paulie starts that, swinging at him then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought. It was very good because it starts off. You actually think they're 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 finding some common ground here. They're going to bury the hatchet. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, I have it here. He says, Rocky says, uh, the police saying, uh, "Shut your freaking mouth! You've been keeping me down." And then Rocky says, "Keep yelling it, Polly, and maybe you'll believe it. Keeping you down, you know. Sometimes you're like a crazy brother to me. So I'm going to tell you what I'm feeling here, and I mean this from the heart. You ain't down, Polly." You ain't a loser. You're just a jealous, lazy bum. <laughs> that's and that's when he, uh, yeah, that's when it gets gets a bit out of hand. But uh, all, he, all he wanted was a job, you know. All that, all that talk. It, it was just really uh, Paulie looking for a job. That was it, because I, uh, well, he, he, I suspected he was left out, but I mean, he wasn't that left out. I mean, he had a nice suit he had, you know. <laughs> And a, a nice bottle of Jameson in, in his pocket as well. But, <laughs> where do where do we um go go from here now? Uh, where where do we? But, oh yeah, um, after he loses the title to uh yeah oh yeah, um after that whole thing with with Mickey having a heart attack, Rocky can't go ahead with the fight. He can't. But Mickey tells him no, just go on. You know, go, go out and fight him. And drop that bum, you know, as, as the, you know, the, the words he used. But um, he goes out and you can see how scared he is, like looking, you know, like Club Alang looks like the, you know, he's he won't take his eyes out and, and Rocky's just looking up at him and then he's looking around him and all. And he's like a little school child, like looking up at the, you know, this is like, you know, he's, he's facing a bully or something like that. And then Polly, who was now walking for him, he's like, you know, well, uh, just I'm now trying. I just go out and knock, knock him out, Rock. <laughs> but he uh, starts off very good, and I oh, yeah, I think that's because um, of uh, what 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 uh, what's after happening. You know, just a, a few minutes earlier. But he's um, Club Alang soon gets the upper hand. He does, and um, I think is uh, after the first round, he's like, oh, Rocky's like, oh no, he's too strong, too strong, you know. Where, where's Mick? Where's Mick? You know, where's like Mick's down with, with a doctor, and he has a, you know, one of the what are them tubes that, that the CPR tubes giving you? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he's uh, coming up anywhere now for you. But um, the uh, second round doesn't last long at all, and club holds him. Up and he like it. It's like Rocky's just sitting there or standing there waiting for it, like because well I know it was slowed down, but I mean like you yeah, couldn't move or something. But he gets whacked. He gets a big left to the face. I think it's a left, yeah. 
Um, and then he, he's down. And Creed is even like, you know, I, I don't know. You, you, kind, you kind of look at Apollo and he's like, nearly like, get secondhand embarrassment from looking at it or something. Because yeah. like, uh, Creed uh, knows that, that he'd take Club Alang, no problem, like, you know, but. He like, as I said, looks like a, a, a bit embarrassed there when when he's um fighting him or when he knocks him out. Yeah, the first the first round of that match, like Rocky, I think he must get like about fifty you know clean headshots <laughs> on on Clover Lang, and Lang just doesn't go down. Like it's 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 absolutely impossible that that would happen in you know in reality. You get fifty you know clean headshots, and not one of them takes down takes down the the guy. But yeah, Apollo Creed, he's because uh, we talked about this when we did the review of Rocky IV, um, Apollo Creed doesn't like the idea of being a has-been, that his time is over. He he can't really accept getting old. He can't accept the idea of retirement. And I think Rocky represents to him, because uh, Rocky is not uh, that much younger than Apollo Creed. And I think uh, Rocky symbolizes to him that you can still you can still put it up to the top the top guys, so he's 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 rooting for for Rocky, and even <laughs> yeah, I, I really like the part where Apollo before that fight Apollo gets into the ring, and he's going over to, you know, just to wave to the crowd and then just to greet the the fighters, and when he steps over to <laughs> the Clover Lang's uh, uh, corner, Clover Lang immediately says, "Get the hell away from me, boy!" or <laughs> something. He's like, uh, "You're a has been." And I don't, it's, it's, I don't know what he says. He says something like, I don't want you infecting me. Or So he, he treats him like a leper, Clubber Lang. He, he treats the former champion. Like he, he doesn't respect anyone. And, you know, we mentioned that he even, he throws Mick to the side. He, he probably uh, caused Mick's heart attack. Yeah, most likely he caused it by, by throwing him to the side against the wall. You know, a feeble, a feeble old man. But Apollo Creed, or sorry, Clubber Lang doesn't care about anyone. He doesn't even care about the former champion. You know, doesn't care about him at all. Um, so Creed, uh, when Creed goes over to Rocky's corner, he says, he says, uh, hey there, Stallion. And then he goes, drop this chump. <laughs> so he's like, he's kind of made up his mind that whatever happens, whatever happens, uh, he, he just wants this clubber line to disappear from, from boxing. Yeah, as uh, you said, when he when he does go over to uh, what do you say when, when he goes over to Club Club of Lang's corner and Club uh, Apollo puts his you know like he, he's just being respectful and he puts his hand out but straight away Club are just pff, straight to the side and he goes I don't want no hairs on that corner that hasn't got anything you know that that I don't want you know talking about the belt like you know and he's like come on come on Creed come on. You know, and you can just see Creed looking and boy, like he, he goes out with the Rocky and he just, yeah, do everyone a favour and drop this chunk. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then when he loses to um, Lang, yeah, goes into, um, he, he goes in to see Mickey does and Mix uh, was asking him, like, you know, what happened? And he says, oh, second round, you know, um, you know, it, it was a knockout, and you know, ah, oh, we 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 got him, did we? We we got him, and um, but when Mick looks at Rocky and he sees the, you know, the beat up face, he knows that he didn't win, and then he, you know, he, I think his heart then finally gives out, and you know, when Rocky shouts out a big Mick, no, <laughs> but um. Yeah, that's it. Um, and did did you notice though? Uh, <clears throat> now, I don't want to be getting into politics or that now, but did you notice um, when Rocky is giving Mick his uh, funeral? Did you notice? Um, I did. I did. Yeah. And <laughs> it's funny because I I never noticed that before until until I watched it this afternoon. Uh, I had it in my head that Mick was was playing an Irish like. He seemed like an Irish, I thought he was like an Irish American character. Uh, that's what I thought, but it turned out no, he wasn't. So yeah, I saw that there was a service, and and Rocky is whatever he's repeating the Hebrew um, eulogy, or whatever. So yeah, I saw that. Yeah, 
because I never saw that before either. And <clears throat> it was only when I watched it a couple of days back, I was like, you know, and you can even see the, you know, the the star of David on his um on his is, is what's it would it be a tomb? I don't know. The, the, it's, it's a it's a weird way that they, they don't bury them. Do they actually do that? Like put them like I have, them like mark slabs yeah. or something. I've no idea. I've no idea. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. What do they call them? Crips? Is that it? Crips? Crips? Now you're you're thinking of the of the the blacks in America, the the bloods and Crips. No, no, the Crips, the Crips. You know the. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> right. I got you there, didn't I? <laughs> Go on, go on. We we continue with it. We continue with it. So yeah, uh, just to say, just to say, just to say, Irish feeling that you, you were saying earlier that Clumber Lang has no redeeming features, and when he wins, you know, when he wins the the match, he starts saying to the ringside uh, reporters, "He's nothing. I cannot lose. I told you, I cannot lose. I retired him." And then he continues and he says, "He's no man." You better listen to whatever I say. I'm the new power, and I'm here to stay. I am the real champion. <laughs> like there's no, there's no depth of character to Clubber Lang whatsoever. Nothing, no charm, and, uh, zero charm. I, I, like, like that's that's what I, I was, I was saying earlier. That there's nothing to like about this chap. Like he's, you know, like the, there's not one thing. You know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not fast forwarding here, but if, even in the in the second fight. Like someone tries to from the audience jump out at him because like they don't like him, he's getting bills. Like, but anyway, um, yeah, <clears throat> this is when um Rocky then after the fight and Mick dies. What he do? He um he's he's go goes on this bike ride. He does and he you know goes up to a statue and he throws the helmet at the statue and he's you know he's he's well he's angry. He's you know a lot of emotions going on, but um he ends up going back to the gym. And yeah, uh, you know what's what's that ball called? You know, it's, it's like a fucking pair of testicles. At, at you, you know, you're <laughs> yeah. What are you uh, talking about? Is this in the gym? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Speedball, speedball. I think speedball. Yeah. <laughs> I I always think of like uh, get get down and you just go dum 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 because someone's popped. <laughs> <laughs> but um no yeah hits that he does and then straight from behind them like um Apollo Creed uh, shows up and he goes that's not the way to do it lean into it and then he's uh Apollo and he goes yeah you know and then Apollo starts on going on about like you know look you lost that fight for all the wrong reasons you know you know, oh, you, I know your manager dying. You know, played a part, but he says your your heart wasn't in it. He says, you know, you 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 hadn't got the edge like when you fought me. You you had you had that look in your eye. I I hadn't got that look in my eye that night. You know, the, the eye of the tiger. He says, and he says, uh, Rocky's then like, you know, if the pay, you know, if the papers were here, just talking about this, you know, they think we were crazy, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, Apollo then was saying about the title, you know, maybe we could win it back together. So Apollo's like, um, he's he's forming his own plan. Like, I mean, he's 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 not doing all this just for charity, like, you know, because when he says that we we could win this back together, like he means like, yeah, we can keep it in air ranks or our air age kind of, you know, sort of thing, like. But um, and that's why he's always hinting at him. Then from then on, don't forget you owe me a favor after this, you know. But um, yeah, Rocky, yeah, Rocky ends up um going. I, I don't know where he goes. Is it's some hood type place, and uh, he uh, brings his wife uh, and he brings Polly with him, and Polly's like, you know, what's this? He's like, and. Because he's just looking at all the people on, on drugs outside, and he's like, "Why can't we not stay at your house, you know, to Apollo Creed?" <laughs> and he said, "Apollo goes, that's not the point, you know." He says, "Well, well, you know, as he, as he goes into the gym, even, and he's in, introducing them, and 
I think it's Duke that, that comes over and he goes, oh, it'll, it'll be very good walking with you. You know, we, we've, sure, God knows that we've had enough of walking against you. And, um, yeah, he, he uh, in, in, introduced them to, to all the lads and all that. And he's like, yeah, you know, but um, <laughs> what's his, uh, as, as we're walking now in, into the gym, <clears throat> Party doesn't stop shutting up. He doesn't. It, it kind of reminded me of the, of the fort Rocky when when he goes over to Russia. Like he doesn't stop complaining. Like you know, there's always something wrong. And Creed then just had enough at one stage, and he throws his bag down, and he says, you know, look here or something. And then Rocky goes, you know, steps in. He says, oh, sorry, Paolo, it just takes you know about six years to get to know him. And Creed's like, yeah, but I haven't got six years. <laughs> but um. And then, like, the, at the end of renting some hotel room, and it's a bloody kip it is. I don't know why uh, Apollo didn't just let them stay at his gaff, to, to be quite honest, but um, he didn't. But, <laughs> yeah. And then he's um, trying to train Rocky then, and but Rocky just isn't getting into it, you know. And then I suppose you could say that there's the, a bit of a racial thing coming in here. When he's playing the, the eye of the tiger, like through the the ju uh, well, not a jukebox, um, uh, ghetto blaster, that's what we used to call him in back in the nineties. But um, he's like, yeah, he, uh, can't dance to the jungle jungle music, and he's like, um, what's he say? Yeah, uh, yeah, can't train a a, a white fighter to be a coloured fighter, and that you know, you, you can see that that's kind of coming in there. Why I don't know, you know, like because. Back then, that that wasn't even you know in in the films, you know like not, no one was was doing that kind of crap really. But it, um, it was a, it was a few years before white men can't jump. I don't know if you ever watched that film, basketball film. Oh, uh, the one with Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson. That's the one I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember I, that. I, yeah. I was going to say I was feeling like I think Apollo brings him there because he wants to he wants to bring him to a humble environment because up to now Rocky's been living in a dollhouse and that's one of the reasons he lost against Clubber Lang. He didn't take he didn't take the fight seriously. As you said, he was just like tapping the punch bag and looking at the cameras. Like he's like he's like fifty paparazzi surrounding him, you know, and Mick Mick was going mental. And as well, I wanted to say that Clubber Lang, although he has no redeeming features, I can understand his perspective, one of his perspectives anyway, and that is that he's been ignored. He's good enough. He's good enough to have a shot at the title, but the system is keeping him down. It's like one of those trees that grows up and then it overshadows the other plants and the other plants can't get their moment in the sun. And he feels he's being shafted by the system, by the establishment. And that makes him really, really bitter. Um, but yeah, the training, if if we get back to the training, uh, you know, Apollo Creed gets him swimming. And Paulie doesn't let, really seem to like this at all. He says he's a boxer, he's not a fish. And Apollo Creed is like, no, he has to, he has to get all his muscles uh, functioning. And then we see them running on the beach, uh, having a race. And I think, <laughs> I think there's a race, but halfway through the race, uh, Rocky just stops. <laughs> he, start, he starts like swiveling his arms. He's having flashbacks of how he got beaten up by Clubber Lang and he has flashbacks of Mick and all that. And Apollo Creed has reached the, the end of the race and Paulie's there and Adrian's there and he looks back and he just sees Rocky standing there like a like a weirdo looking, <laughs> looking out at the sea and he's like, they, they're like, you know, they're asking Creed, you know, what's wrong? And he's like, it's over. It's over. And then he says to Rocky uh, something like, uh, I don't, what's it? I don't get you, man, or I don't understand you. And it's, a, it's Adrian then, or Adrian, who goes over to Rocky and convinces him to go ahead with the training and go ahead with the fight because she, she thinks that if he doesn't, he'll regret it for the rest of his life and the family will suffer as a consequence. So she convinces him that for everyone concerned, it's better that he go ahead with this fight. And when they have the rematch, I was I was thinking that, you know, she's she's cheering on Rocky, but I got the feeling she probably had divorce papers on her on her lap that she'd already signed, and she was just waiting to see if he'd win the match or not, and if he'd lost it, 
She probably would have divorced him. <laughs> she probably had come to think of it now. <laughs> because I remember when they were, they were in the hotel room, she goes, you know, we, we never really had a honeymoon. <laughs> You know, but and and all, and all the bloody money that, that that he had now, yeah. But yeah, I tell you, that, I tell that, you something. I tell you something. Irish feeling like uh, she's in a better position now than she was in Rocky One. She was working in a pet shop in Rocky One. Now, now she's got walk-in wardrobes. She's got luxury yeah. cars, uh, but she doesn't. She still doesn't seem satisfied. Uh, it's very strange. But it's a uh, it's um one one thing that always seems to come up in the. Film, so is that it's it's always um she she's like his rock though do you know what I mean like she was the one that that always gets you know the the talk of him like what's really wrong and then that part you are talking about on on the beach where Cree goes you know ah, it's it's over that's it. like he, he's like just about washed his hands with him that's it you know. But then, and he's at the beach for the world then, but Adrian comes over and she's like, you know, Apollo thinks you can do it and all. But uh, the, the main factor in it is, and as Rocky even says, he says, I'm afraid. Yeah, okay, do you want me to say it? I'm afraid. So, like, once that kind of comes out, then Rocky starts getting into it more and, you know, we, we, we hear the Rocky music and then he, he starts doing good and he's... On the on the speed bike and he's on and even that when they're running running on the the beach, he even beats Apollo at one point because you see Apollo turning left and Rocky just you know sails by him because like Apollo like wants him tip top like you know what I mean like you know for for the favor later on you know he he doesn't want to fight no scared fighter you know what I mean like <laughs> but um. Yeah, like that. That's what once he ad admits that I'm afraid, you know. And I think she does it in the fourth one. So, like, it was it something when when we done that review, something like that. She said, "I, I it was one of them kind of things." But she she always um seems to be as rock. And I, oh yeah, I suppose that's the thing with having a wife. Like, you know what I mean? That um, you know, you you could have all the faults in the world, but your wife will still love you at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. And then we get to the the rematch. It's, yeah, it's strange. The the rematch is strange. Just the, the boxing and all that and the kind of, the changes between them. One is on top, then the other is on top. Um. Well, suffice it to say that Rocky Rocky wins. He he knocks out Clubber Lang. Clubber Lang tries to get up after five or six seconds, but he can't, and he's gone. And then we have um, jubilation, and then we have where we find out what Apollo Creed's um, reward is for for helping Rocky win back the championship belt, heavyweight championship belt. Do you want to go through this Irish Fenian, or is there anything we've you think we've missed? Um, <clears throat> well, I think we've really covered it all, but um, I I would like to talk about Creed for a sec because his secret in training him, and when he says that maybe we could win it back together, like the belt, like so, like he's now Rocky's friend, you know, and if Rocky has the belt. I have the belt kind of thing. So I uh, think, uh, and as, as I was saying that, Creed wanted Rocky tip-top shape, you know what I mean? If he can beat someone like Club Lang, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, you know what I mean? He's he's good, good enough. And like Creed even said when him and Duke were looking at the real of him fighting Rocky, and Creed goes, you know, I figure a rock we got those seven, eight rounds, he says, you know, after that run out of steam, we got to put him away early. So, um, yeah, the the ending, which is, and then, which would be the start of the fourth one, is when the um, Creed wants to fight him again, because Rocky did win, kind of, you know, it, it was, a, what's the word, I don't know, it was, he, he, it was luck, you know, like one second, and as Creed says, 
he was like, you know, you know, listen here, said Stallion, you know, you know, you, you, um, you beat me by one second, one second. That's very hard, of man, for of an intelligent man for me to understand, you know. So they go into the ring, and they don't want any TVs or newspapers. This is just Creed, you know, looking for that favor that he was, you know, whispering about all the way through it. And Rocky was like, "What favor? What favor?" You know didn't know anything but now he knows bring them into the you know the must be in one of the gyms but he brings them into the gym and then you know um rocky's like you know oh you, you ain't as young as springtime you know and then Creed, uh what does uh does creator uh, rocky say age before beauty or something getting into the ring but you get into the ring and then like you know, Rocky's like, well, how, how are you going to beat me? Like, you know, you've taught me everything, you know. And then Craig's like, you know, almost everything, you know. <laughs> you got to remember now, I fight, you, you fight great, but I'm a great fighter. <laughs> and then he's really pushing the the um, the gum chills and his ding ding. And then you just see, you see the two of them just d- dancing around. And as you mentioned, I think it was in a comment that Creed he, he does have some knee footwork, isn't he? Yeah. And um, when you when he's when he's doing his um fighting and and he's and he's dancing, but um, <clears throat> I suppose that's what he call him the the dancing destroyer. But um, he uh he was like you know Rocky was like, boy, you really move fast for an old guy, and I think there was only something like three years between them or something, but um. You know, and then Craig's like, watch out now, you, you, you don't want this, you know. And when I seen this years ago, I thought that it was just a kind of a sparring thing that I do. But then you see, you know, it, it was only one, pu- well, two punches, the two of them punched each other. But you could hear Craig kind of say, come on, you know, like he really wanted them. And then just that, and you hear the bell ding as, as the two of them hit each other. Creed hits him with the right, and then the south part, Rocky hits him with the left. And, you know, as, as I always said, I, I would have loved him to know who won that. Now, I know that these new Creed films or whatever, um, Rocky said uh, to, to the son of Apollo, oh, yeah, Creed won that. But, like, he could be just saying that, you know what I mean, to fucking ease his kid's life or something like that. But, yeah, I am... Um, yeah, it was a it was a very good um, ending. It was because like that's what Creed wanted all along. You know, that's what, that's that's what he wanted. Yeah, and I have a quote here from Apollo Creed, and it kind of sums up the film very well. I think. It's called by it. I'll leave you hanging here, uh, Irish Fina. Now here it is. Yeah, he says. Now, when we fought, you had the eye of that of the tiger man, the edge, and now you've got to get it back. And the way to get it back is to go back to the beginning. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's to it's to get have have that hunger again, you know, because like as I I said earlier, I think that uh, you know Craig was saying like you you had that the edge, man. You like I I didn't have that look in my eye that night. But if you actually go to look at Rocky too, you know, Creed looks like he, he uh, has more of, like, looking at him and, and he wants to kill him, like, <laughs> whereas, like, you know, Rocky's real polite or something, like, you know. But anyway, we'll, we'll just go for for the film, like, that, that he says that, yeah, um, you you had the eye of the tiger, man. And I, I only found out recently that, um, do you know, the survivor, I have the tiger, um, Rocky wanted actually a, a Queen song first before he um, approached them. And the one song that he uh, wanted off them, and it wouldn't have worked at all, thinking of it now. It was that one, another one, Bass of Dust. Now, can you imagine, like, the third one starting off with that? <laughs> no, I think the soundtrack that they went with was was a good one. And... The Rocky Four I mentioned in our last review of of the Rocky films was a very good soundtrack as well, like a real kind of upbeat eighties positivity about it. Innocent times, well, innocent, but yet not so innocent when we go back and rake through the ashes. But yeah, um, I think Irish Fenian, from from my perspective, I've covered as much as I can 
I'd like to thank you for inviting me on. And I recommend people, if they're listening to this on my channels, so that they go into the description and subscribe to Irish Fenians YouTube channel. I'll have the link in there. And likewise, if you're listening to this on Irish Fenians channel, you should find a link to my channel in the description. Uh, any parting shots, Irish Fenian, before we finish it up? What's your prediction for the fight? Pain. But I tell you now, it was it's it's always a good having you on uh, Betwixt because I I think um, well I mean it's a there's there's not much well I mean there, there there is a few things going on in it, but it's not like you know um, a real like kind of a film where you have to you know study it and that. But um, it's a, it's always good having you on Betwixt and having an old um, natter about these movie reviews. I'm not sure whether um. People like them or not? Do they? Do you? You know, put put an old thing in in the comments there. But um, yeah, no, it was a it was a good one though it was because I, I hadn't seen it in years actually. So um, I'll I'll just uh, retire by saying um, I tell you next month I'm gonna drop you like a bad habit.